Hello, my name is Roma Jinjihashvili, and uh, this DVD is going to be dedicated to Scandinavian defense, or sometimes we'll call it center counter. Now, I was I got multiple requests of doing some typical games uh, played by me. And I did play Scandinavian defense uh, very frequently in, uh, in the years I played chess, competitive chess. I played it on all kinds of levels against grandmasters, against little lower rated players. And I had tremendous success. The line I'm talking about is E4, D5, and on ED, I adopted continuation of knight f6 and uh, with uh, considerable success. Um, knight f6 is the games mostly we're going to be discussing on this DVD and I have for you some material with queen takes d5 and after uh, knight c3, queen a5 move. I know today is a big chapter. Queen d6 becomes increasingly popular, but uh, I don't want to discuss this on this DVD because it's a very big chapter and there are several ways to play for white. But right now what I want to discuss is old fashion way of playing Scandinavian, which is partially queen takes d5 and mostly knight f6. So let's start looking at some games. I'm going to mostly look at the, my own games because they are very typical um, for this opening and what you can get in these kind of positions. So let's look at the first game played by me um, against uh, Colombian Grandmaster Alonso Zapata. It was played in 80, 1980. Oh, ED Knight F6, D4, Knight takes D5, Knight F3, Bishop G4, Bishop E2. It's not very competitive way to play uh, against this opening, but it's very reliable. Um, when I lived in the Soviet Union before when I uh, immigrated from there in 1972-73, I played um, this opening same with bishop e2 move against the rising star then and almost one of the top players in the world at that point Anatoly Karpo and I was very successful too and that game kind of inspired me to play this opening more and more frequently so after bishop e2 knight c6 castle was played now, before we discuss this castle, I gotta tell you that there is very interesting and very competitive play c4, knight b6, d5. And I have some games uh, for you played with this variation. And this is actually very exciting position happens after that. But not in this game, white chose to castle, e6, c4, knight b6, and bishop e3. Now black gets very, very comfortable position after bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3, knight takes c4, Queen a4, knight b6, bishop takes c6, pawn takes c6, queen takes c6, 
queen d7, rook c1. Well, possibility is queen e4, but black still has very comfortable position by playing c6, followed by bishop e7 or bishop d6 and castling. Bishop on e3 is not very active, which determines, I think, its position slight advantage for black. Rook c1 was played. And now queen takes c6. Rook takes c6 and king d7. And rook, rook to c2. Now let's, let's summarize uh, the results of the opening. Black solved any problem they might have had. They have comfortable potential square on d5. Their king is very well placed on a closed vertical for and ready for the end game. I think, in my opinion, black is better here. Bishop b4 was played. For th Why didn't want to play knight c3 and uh, to be left with a dark square bishop against a knight after bishop takes c3. For example, here now, bishop takes c3 is very strong, and if rook takes, knight on d5 will be permanent, and if pawn takes, then after knight c4, black has maybe decisive advantage, because they are first to get the b file, on rook b1, rook b8, and white is in trouble on rook c1, rook b6, black has very good position. So, so for this reason, they played a3 first, now bishop d6, knight c3. Purpose of bishop b4 was to provoke the a3 move. And the reason uh, we provoked the a3 move is because now after rook hb8, rook ac1, a5, white will have difficulties playing b3, and they have kind of backwards b2 pawn. a5, rook d1, c6, rook dc1, rook a6, bishop g5, a4, now you see the clear weakness on b2, a4, bishop h4, knight d5, knight d1, pawn f5, to prevent exchange of bishops after bishop g3, and bishop g3 will be simply f4, and after f5, f3, Rook b3, you see black already has clear advantage. So game continued uh, uh, another 40 moves, and I managed to win. But this is not already, it's clear that black has an advantage. And to see the whole game is uh, does not reflect analysis of the center counter as an opening. This game was played in the New York Open Tournament in 1987 against Swedish Grandmaster Ferdinand Ehlers. Um, after e4, d5, e d, knight, f6, d4, knight takes d5, knight f3, bishop g4, bishop e2, knight c6, c4, knight b6, and here he played d5. This is, as I already mentioned in a previous game, is very competitive moves 
gives very sharp positions that was uh, thoroughly uh, analyzed by me before, of course, the games, before I ever... You cannot allow d5 move without being properly prepared. So after bishop takes f3, my opponent chose bishop takes f3. In a game against Judith Polgar, she played g takes f. And we're going to see another game with g takes f played by Anand against Kamsky. But we're going to get to this a little later. So bishop takes f3, knight e5, bishop e2. And here, c6 move. Now, c6 move, the idea is to threaten knight takes c4, which was not possible on a previous move because black simply loses a piece. Queen check, taking the knight on c4. So, black must prepare it. Now, they are kind of simultaneously attacking d5 pawn and c4 pawn. Queen d4 is by far the best option. Knight g6, knight c3, e5. You see the ampersand taking is not possible because queen is hanging and after e5 Queen e4, c takes d, c takes d, bishop d6, and black wants to comfortably finish development, castle, and after f5, they would have very, very good position. Bishop b5 check, knight d7, castle on both sides, and now black is ready to play f5, followed by e4, getting really a very uh, strong and dangerous position. Queen f5 is a logical move attacking the knight and also stopping f5. But that's not going to be for long because after queen f5, knight c5 was played. And on b4, simply knight a6. Now black, uh, black is attacking b4 pawn, which has to be protected. And now they're gaining tempo for kicking the queen out, finally, from f5. And uh, after knight e7, queen h3, knight c7 also. Now I'm threatening to take the bishop on b5 and also possibly the pawn on d5, bishop d3, attacking the h7 pawn, f5, and on bishop g5, e4. Black has already an advantage. Bishop c4, h6. We want to clear the position of the g5 uh, bishop. Bishop d2 was played. Knight g6. It's clear that black has an advantage because they have potential knight e5 and pushing the pawns, creating very strong threats to white's king. Knight g6 here, white felt that they have quickly uh, to prevent further advancement for uh, black. They played f3. e takes f. And now if rook takes f3 or queen takes f3, black goes knight e5, attacking the bishop on c4, and further on queen h4, having very, very dangerous attack. So g takes f was played. And now, white's position completely falls apart.
queen f6 creating queen d4 check threat and after queen f6 it's, it is very very hard to find any uh, kind of defense for white knight e2 simply stopping queen d4 and after knight e2 very strong move b5 why b5 is so strong because after b5 bishop b3 would lose a piece queen b2 attacking both bishops so white played bishop c3 attacking the queen and now very powerful move knight f4 practically ends the game because if white takes queen then black is going to take the queen and end up black is going to end up with extra piece because it's in check and then rook takes one bishop and now when black when white takes the knight then pawn takes second bishop and white is simply a piece down and there is no defense after knight f4 my opponent played one more move queen g3 and now after very simple tactical shot b takes c simply eliminating bishop the protector of e2 knight and now if white takes the queen after knight takes e2 and then taking the queen on g3 white suffered severe losses of material and um, after b takes c there is no other move as you can tell no matter what white plays they are gonna be a piece down for example knight takes f4 queen takes e3 simply losing a piece and queen takes f4 also bishop takes f4 wins the piece because on bishop takes f6 check simply in between move uh, bishop e3 check taking the bishop on f6 on the next move having an extra piece and easily won position so i just want to mention that consequences after uh, queen d4 which i had several times after actually after, after d5 has to be very carefully analyzed well there are two very strong moves bishop takes f3 and also gf and they are like highlights of this sharp variation of Scandinavia. Now let's move to the next game.